Welcome to this week's TDD Weekly Report for the week ending October 8th. First up, this is from bbc.co.uk. There's a show called The Sky at Night. If you're interested in astronomy, it's a very good show hosted by Sir Patrick Moore. His guest was Dr. Alan Chapman in this particular video talking about who invented the telescope. Maybe as a kid in class in grade school learning astronomy, as a small section of your science knowledge for that year, you were told just simplistically that Galileo invented the telescope. And then later on in high school, you found out, well, he didn't really invent the telescope so much as put it into a practical use for astronomy. But come to find out, and this show will let you know, that he wasn't the very first to use a telescope for astronomy. It was actually a scientist named Thomas Harriot, and he actually beat Galileo by about four months in using the telescope for astronomical observations and actually had them recorded down. So there's proof of it too. This was, uh, uh, I'll just read it here. Harriet was the first person to make a drawing of the moon through a telescope on July 26, 1609, over four months before Galileo. This is from Wikipedia if you look up Thomas Harriet, H-A-R-R-I-O-T. But they also talk about him in the, sh the BBC show, and as usual, the links will de be down below in the descriptions. Um, it's a very interesting show if you're into astronomy, especially, uh, uh, I'd like to put out there our uh, resident moto vlogger astronomer, Rob, RC62. I'd like to know out of curiosity if you happen to know this little fact, too. I didn't myself happen to know that Thomas Harriet um, was the very first person to actually make uh, recorded observations with a telescope. Uh, actually, who did invent the telescope? They talk about, too, that that really can't be proven so much because uh, too many people came forward at the exact same time, but I won't give it all away. You can watch the show. Um, second up, the Tron-inspired light cycle. Someone actually invented the Tron, the, or actually built one, Parker Brothers Choppers. I don't know if you were into it so much. A lot of people kind of panned the movie Tron, too, but I really liked it. I thought it was great. I liked the original Tron also. I hope they come up with a third. But uh, this person actually, uh, or this uh, group, Parker Brothers Choppers, actually put together an electric version, totally electric powered. There's a little bit of video involved, too. This hit the uh, moto vlogging community. Uh, they were posting it on Saturday. So I saw it there, but I also saw it about a week before. I was going to use it in last week's show, actually, but I just didn't have the time to fit it in. If you look in the video, I'm kind of wondering how practical this is going to be out for the highway. It seems like the guy has a little bit of trouble operating it around the parking lot, even at slow speed. It could be just because of the fact it's quite a new design and the way it's shaped and things like that. Maybe it will be a good motorcycle, but if it can't really hit the open road and go at any kind of speed... Uh, maybe they still need to do some modifications to it or something, but the video is really interesting. It's not that long. It's called New Full Scale Electric Tron Light Cycle. And I'll put the link to that down below. We talked about, on the last show, last week, we talked about uh, invisibility cloaks in the infrared. And I was wondering if uh, somebody would be interested in working in uh, invisibility cloaks in the visible wavelengths. Well, as a matter of fact, I found that this week too. This is uh, from October 4th. This is on wired.com. Watch, it's called Invisibility Cloak Uses Mirages to Make Objects Vanish. Now this they actually use underwater, I guess, so they can control. And it uses kind of the same principle too. It uses uh, different heat layers to actually bend light around an object. And it's pretty amazing how they make this underwater object just kind of disappear using this heating technique. So who knows? I mean, I, I, invisibility cloaks are coming along a lot faster than I even thought. Maybe in the next 10 years it won't. It'll be uh, just trivial to, to do something like make your car invisible um, to visible light and just bend light around it, and all of a sudden your car going down the road just disappears. Uh, might not be such a good idea for safety reasons or anything like that, but... Uh, yeah, I really thought we were way away from uh, any kind of cloaking devices, but it seems like they're coming on and being developed very quickly. And uh, the video to this is not really long, but it's very interesting. And last up, computer virus hits U.S. drone fleet. Evidently, somehow, a virus snuck in or a hacker got into the um, computer systems that run our drone airplanes, the Predator drone and the Reaper drones. They're actually being keylogged right now. Now, they said they've tried to wipe it out many, many times, and it keeps popping back up. 
uh, they're still not shutting the systems down. They're still flying the drones because, according to them, none of the information is getting out. It's all even the key logging is staying internal, according to what um, they've stated here. But if they're not even of the, uh, if they don't have the ability to get the thing off the computers in the first place and it keeps popping back on, I wonder how accurate they are as far as uh, in their thinking that the, the information is not leaking out somewhere. So uh, that's a pretty interesting article. This is in Wired Magazine, too, that it gives this uh, article, too. It's uh, quite an interesting read. So uh, makes you kind of wonder, too. I, I think in some cases the military is actually using its own operating system for security reasons. I'm wondering why in the case of the drone, they don't tell enough detail that I can really determine this, but I wonder why in the case of the drone they're running an operating system that's uh, that can be infected by a virus like that. I'm guessing it has to be something like... Uh, you know, Windows or uh, Unix or something like that that people are familiar with enough to uh, sneak a virus on. I think if they would write their own operating system for the drones, it would be a little bit more difficult to develop a, a virus to hit it. And you would think with uh, especially something like drones to where they could actually turn and be used against you that you would uh, not even think of using an operating system that could be easily effect, uh, infected and you would want to hopefully make your own operating system to run them. But so anyway, that's it for this week. Take care, everybody. I will catch you next week.